Welcome to Spatry's Cup of Linux. I got my friend Brian here, one of my largest contributors on uh, on the chats that you'll see uh, when you're uh, sifting through uh, my videos and stuff. And today we're going to talk about Linux distributions and uh, that sort of thing. And uh, Brian, let me ask you, uh, what got you started in Linux? Well, uh, truthfully, I was using another operating system that was of the Millennium brand and uh, I really had a lot of problems with it and I was uh, a little uh, upset that they uh, would come out with a, a, a much nicer operating system and wouldn't uh, trade out that that Millennium edition for it. <laughs> I remember uh, that one. Oh my god. Was and that... <laughs> uh, so I started thinking you know uh, I just got bamboozled by this corporation. I got bamboozled in uh, paying uh, hard-earned money for a whole new operating system that wasn't going to give me fits and everything. So uh, at that point, uh, I asked a friend of mine, uh, there must be some other operating systems out there than this. And he started mentioning, well, yes, there is and he brought up Linux. So uh, at that point I started looking at it. Now that was back in the year 2005 or 6. Yep, I remember that. I had friends that were running Windows Millennium Edition and um, that was a buggy operating system. I think I only had it installed on my computer for about a week before I went back to Windows 98 Second Edition. It, I, w I was actually displeased by that. But during yeah, that it's not good. and during that time, I I've tried a few Linux distributions here and there, but there was always a deal breaker. A driver wouldn't work, you know, the sound wouldn't work, or I couldn't use the modem on the computer or something like that. It was it was ridiculous. Now, have you used any other Windows uh, installations since Mill since Millennium Edition? Oh yes. Um, uh, so I did a. Uh, I, I did play around with other people's Windows 98s. Uh, in fact, I think at one time I may have gotten a hold of a 98 computer at one time. And uh, from there I went ahead and uh, did get myself uh, a Windows XP. And I used it for uh, several years. And um, then uh, from there um, they came out with Windows Vista. Uh, which I rarely touched, if ever. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, but but I such bad things about that. And people going from that down to um, down to XP again, and then finally Windows Seven came out, uh -huh. and that was a great computer again. It, it's like what they do is they start out with a good one, and they come out with a terrible one, <laughs> and then they come out with a good one. And then they come out with a terrible one. So you get where you're kind of forced to spend a little bit extra money or something to get the better one again. You know, it's really funny. I made a lot of money downgrading PCs from Windows <laughs> Vista to XP. And I did this on countless occasions where, you know, and I actually had to get on the phone with the support, you know, for some of these companies that says, oh, well, you're going to in violation of your warranty if you run anything besides Vista on this computer. I don't care. I want this thing to work. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we yeah, know so that we're going to have to... On and on. You know? At, le at least with uh, Linux distribution, if it sucks, well, you got it for free. So <laughs> <laughs> you can at least get another, a better one for free. Exactly, and and that's the thing because there's so many different flavors, and I've tried a number of them, and in just this past year alone, Linux distributions have become really terrific. I mean, most of them work really work well right out of the box. Now I've had a few that were kind of you know iffy, you know, um, like for instance, I tried to install Arch on this machine. And I'm holding my Android with all the instructions and everything on how to install it because I only had the one computer. Tried three times to install it, still couldn't get it to work, following the instructions explicitly, and then later found out that it was the installer that was broken on the thing. Oh, yeah. 
so there there are a uh, what what is your uh, favorite Linux distribution that you're using now? My favorite one at the moment would have to be the Ubuntu, and uh, I'm running um, a little outdated. Uh, I'm running Ubuntu 10.04 Lucid Lynx. Good operating system. And uh, I, I did not go uh, any farther than that. However, I do have. Um, uh, I, I I don't think I ever installed the Naughty Narwhal. Uh, but I do have the Oneric Ocelot on VirtualBox. And of course, through your tutorial, I went ahead and uh, uh, added the, um, I did the sudo app get uh, install uh, on Ubuntu desktop onto that. And uh, from there, I went from, uh, so I still have the. 11.10 Ubuntu Oneric Ocelot uh, with the Unity, but then it also gives me the option of going with uh, the GNOME, GNOME shell on top of that, mm -hmm. whatever which, whichever one I want to uh, load into. It's like that having. My, it's like having the best of both worlds. Uh, with, mm -hmm. Pardon me. It's like having the best of both worlds. Yeah, it really was. Mm -hmm. I, I think when I started out with Ubuntu, I started out with Karmic Koala. And uh, before that, I was with Mandriva for, for many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I just found uh, how could I help not going to Ubuntu when it was so user-friendly and uh, uh, point-and-click. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm, I'm one of those point-click kind of guys. Yeah, me too. You know, and uh, and that's that's one of the reasons why I uh, built this uh, channel because uh, you know I've used Windows for so many years. I've become so accustomed to having a graphic user interface. You know, and now Linux distributions make that easy for end users because they don't really have to use the terminal if they don't want to. Uh, I think that's a, that's a nice feature of it. But the thing is, you know, at least you still have that terminal there in case you run into a problem. You go on the forums and you get you get the uh, instructions on how to fix that issue in the terminal. So that's something you have to shed your fear of. But um, nonetheless, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. it's there in case you need it. So pretty right. good stuff there. Um, all right, so... Um, yeah, and the thing is, I, I can't stress enough to my viewers that, you know, the best thing to do is just to go out and try different distributions, you know, and ev eventually you'll run into one that'll fit you perfectly. You know, in your case, the you have the LTS, the, um, the uh, Ubuntu, and uh, surprisingly enough, Ubuntu's now going to stretch their uh, long time uh, service distributions from three years to five years now. The long term. Yeah. yeah. So you get you get even more, or you could, or you could actually uh, download and install a rolling release distribution. But those aren't uh, quite as user friendly, and those tend to be a little bit buggier. But you get updates more frequently. I was thinking about running Linux Mint Debian on my system, but. I don't know, you know. I don't know if I wanted the headaches associated with it. But then I found Pin Guy OS, and this has been uh, a wonderful operating system for me. And and I don't think I'll use anything else. And you know, I could probably be happy with this running this configuration the way I have it for several years to come, without ever needing to upgrade it. So I I would have to say that if I were uh, uh, going to uh, steer somebody with. Uh, a system that would be have all the pre-installed packages that one may need that I would probably steer them to either Linux Mint or PinGuy because they come with all your uh, Mozilla Firefox uh, pl flash plugins in the system and all that you don't have to hunt for those where those aren't uh, are 
weren't installed by default with Ubuntu. And uh, but uh, you know, Pin Guide takes you one takes it one step further and just makes it that much more easier for somebody who may not be in the know. And it just comes uh, pre-installed by default. Yeah, that's the one thing that really blew me away. Um, actually, I did a review recently on um, Pin Guy OS, and <coughs> excuse me. And the one thing I did was I always kept a backup of Firefox with all of my plugins and everything, and I would just throw them into my home folder and use it. Well, when I did my review, it turns out that. Pin Guy already has some of the best plugins already pre-configured in Firefox, ready to go. So you already have the Flash Player working. You already have the Video Player, so you can visit most websites and see QuickTime videos right on the web pages. I mean, uh, it, it, you know, why have Alpo when you can have Filet Mignon? You know, it's <laughs> all there. You know. <laughs> yes. So yeah, I definitely would uh, highly recommend uh, Mint or Pin Guy OS to beginners. And as a matter of fact, uh, in an upcoming episode, folks, I'm going to be talking about the five best Linux distributions for beginners. And uh, so you'll definitely want to stick around for that one. Uh, I, I'll uh, cover uh, some of the advantages of each of those operating systems. And... Um, and then we'll probably also have some other goodies on that show as well. So all in all, lots of good stuff out there. And the thing is, you know, uh, the cost of ownership is so much lower having a nice Linux distribution. You know, instead of shelling out hundreds of dollars every few years to upgrade your computer, buy a new operating system and all this stuff, now you can take all that money and save it towards taking your family on a vacation or doing something really nice for yourself. You know, and uh, the Linux community has really, really matured over the years. I have watched Linux grow from being a real buggy, hard-to-use operating system to something that is absolutely user-friendly, easy to learn, and uh, pretty much trouble-free computing. Not to say that it doesn't have its problems. You know, uh, any operating system, Windows included, has issues. You know, but the thing is, uh, it's easier for me to work work around my problems in Linux than it was for Windows, to say the least. So, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it would be a great advantage to uh, go ahead and learn some of these uh, other operating systems. Um, you know, um, uh, the Windows, the Mac, they, they all cost big bucks, and... Uh, uh, they're not the only kids on the block, really, and uh, these uh, these Linux distributions are becoming so so uh, evolved into uh, point and click. There's no reason not to. Uh, I do know that uh, there's a lot of people who um, end up getting viruses and stuff on on uh, maybe not so much the uh, Apple products, but uh, on the um, on the Windows, especially, uh, I I personally have uh, uh, loaded things onto a virtual machine, and uh, went ahead and uh, installed a Linux operating system onto a, a virtual machine. And when people go online, I instruct them, well, you know, you can keep your Windows operating system here, but when you go online. Why don't you just start getting used to the uh, Ubuntu operating system or the Pin Guy, and, uh, uh, and and just start surfing the net with this, and you'll find with that you're going to feel a lot safer. That, that is, on. and that is exactly what I did when I switched to Linux. And every time that I've tried Linux, I always ran a dual booting uh, configuration, and running a dual boot gives you the advantage of still having Windows so that you can run those programs that you just absolutely cannot live without and then you have the added benefit and security of Linux when you're uh, surfing the internet and that sort of thing. Um, 
and that's what I did. I dual booted until I finally got to a point where I felt that Linux was the winner for me anyway. And uh, there came that day not too long ago when I finally said, this is it. I wiped my Windows partition and it has never returned. And now I have Wine and Vineyard running all of my Windows applications, running them beautifully, I might add. And uh, there are a few games that I still like to play. They're older games, so I have them running in a virtual machine. And so I, I don't feel like I've lost anything. As a matter of fact, I've gained because, you know, uh, the, you know, as we discussed earlier, there were editions of Windows that would meet or fall short of expectations. And Linux has not only met, it has actually exceeded my expectations on several levels. So it's something I would highly recommend. Yes. Uh, and, and it really is uh, something, as you could see from mine, you probably can see it now. Yes, I do. The different, the different operating systems I have running on VirtualBox. And uh, so I don't even have to do a dual boot. I can just run this within my... Uh, my uh, 10.04 Lucid, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it, it really works out really nice. And people just can't help but get well versed on uh, uh, the operating systems, and um, they get to where they just they feel a lot more comfortable using these than than your one for the masses, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, you know. The, the, te the virtualization technologies really opens the door for people so that they can try these things without even having to dual boot. Exactly, but the, you know, the thing is though with uh, running uh, Windows, I had an issue last night, for example, with uh, one program. Uh, I wanted to, uh, well, I'm sure you guys have already seen that I have some new titles on my uh, screen and I was using a Windows program using this within a virtual machine I just could not get some of the features to work but went, running that same program under Wine opened up all those features for me and I was able to work with the software a lot better and so I've actually found that Wine does a magnificent job of handling uh, a lot of my Windows based applications because the acceleration, the 3D acceleration within a virtual machine is still experimental, but it is getting better. Absolutely, it is Absolutely. getting better. Okay, well, I think uh, I think uh, uh, we covered quite a lot of ground here. Uh, my suggestion to my viewers: try Linux; it works. <laughs> That's I would have to agree with that. Okay, if you found this conversation useful, please hit like and subscribe. Also, uh, please be sure to catch me on Facebook and Twitter. We're still counting down to my 100th episode. Lots of good things are heading your way, so stay tuned.